So hello there. Hello. It's Sunday night again already. And I see we have some people on, but I can't see who's on. So say hi if you're here. <coughs> and um, anyway, so today is Sunday, December 2nd. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe it's December already? And this year is already over. Uh, we only have a couple of weeks left. Ah, so anyway, today's Sunday, December second. I'm Lynn Huber. Says and I'm Richard. Richard, and this is our app. This is our weekly Sunday learning with Lynn. So today we're going to talk about why really shy people can be amazing in an Avon business. Um, it's not just you don't have to be super outgoing, super friendly to be successful. So let me do some things. I'm going to move this over here. Hey, Patricia, good to see you. And I'm going to do this. Okay, perfect. So now you should be able to see my page. And this is my online beauty biz blog. This is where all of my training is for Avon representatives. It's for my team as well as anybody else who wants to learn. So if you ever have something you want me to teach on, send me a note. Send me a message on Facebook or whatever, and I would love to do a training on it. Super shy. Well, awesome. Then you're in the right place at the right time. <clears throat> so so this is my online beauty biz. And I am going to go down here on the right-hand side. And I'm going to just search for shy because I just know that, that will pull it up. And see, so we have this article here, Why mm -hmm. Really Shy People Can Be Amazing in Their Avon Business. So, hey, hey Priscilla, good to see you. Oh, good. <clears throat> so, you know... There's introverts and there's extroverts, and um, some of us are just outgoing and bubbly, and some of us aren't. So if you look at us, Mr. Richard over here is Mr. Extrovert. He is friendly to everybody. He, you know, we're in the store, and he's just talking it up with everybody. He's chatting, having a good time, <clears throat> and I'm the one that's really quiet. I'm the introvert. And I know you might think, well, you don't act like an introvert all the time. And you're right, because you know what? An introvert really isn't um, how friendly or how social you are. It's more about where you get your energy. So um, an extrovert gets their energy from being around people, being around lots of people. That's, what, that's where they get their energy. Richard loves being at parties and with lots of people. And intro extroverts get their energy from being alone and reading a book or, or mm -hmm. taking a shower or sitting in the bathtub or whatever, but being alone. And so, hey, Tracy, I, um, are you guys seeing anything? I believe everybody is seeing everything, I hope. Patricia mm -hmm. and Priscilla, I hope you're seeing my screen. So, Tracy, I'm not sure if um, – Find that in a sec, you know. Yeah, I guess if somebody else can't see, they'll let me know. Anyway, um, <coughs> so where was I? Um, so, yeah, okay, so I can be, you know, I've learned, and, and you, um, yeah, Patricia's put, <laughs> Priscilla says she can see, and hi, Sherry, good to see you. I'm sorry, Tracy. You might try refreshing your screen or something. Maybe that will help. So anyway, I, I, I can be outgoing, I can be bubbly, I can talk, I can get in front of an audience, but I have to turn myself on, if that makes sense. So okay. Richard's always on. He, um, we, we go to the store, and he's on, and he's talking to somebody. <clears throat> now, if I go to the store, and I'm in the store, and I'm not there specifically to recruit, then I probably will, they'll ring up my order, I might say hi, I might not say a whole lot to the cashier, I'll give him my money, might make a little bit of small talk, but it's not going to be much. And that's just me. I'm probably not even going to offer a brochure because I'm not turned on. I didn't go out with that intention. And so my brain just isn't working that way. It's not on. If I take brochures with me and my plan is to go out there and talk to people, then I'm fine talking to people. And, um, you know, a lot of times we, Richard and I, we, we feed off of each other anyway. So if we're out together and hi, Norma, welcome. Good to see you here. But if we're out together and we're in the store, Richard's just Mr. Bubbly and he's just chatting away. And that kind of brings me out of my shyness, if you want to say. Okay, I'm, I'm a little bit, it kind of helps turn me on a little bit so that I'm more outgoing and positive. And then I'll get into a conversation. And, you know, you never know. But, but 
there's no right or wrong. That's just who you are. You're either an extrovert or an introvert or somewhere mm -hmm. in between. And no, one is not better than the other. Um, it's just if you know what you are, it helps you to get around it, right? It helps you to, to find ways that work your business that work for you. And maybe because I am an introvert, maybe that's why I created the systems. Although I really believe <clears throat> systems help everybody. So we're going to talk about that. So, okay, so maybe you're not really an introvert, you're just shy. <laughs> maybe you're just shy. Maybe you're afraid to talk to people. That's okay, too, because we're going to show you how you can build a business even if you are shy and even if you um, are afraid to talk to people. You know, sometimes, especially younger women who get into this business or, you know, I, ha I have a couple of people on my team who recently divorced or recently widowed older women and they're shy too because they've never had to go out and deal in public and they're just not sure how and it's a confidence thing for them. So it could be yeah. lots of reasons why you might be shy and that's okay because we're still going to show you how to overcome that, how to make your business work. So um, an, an extrovert has typically lots of charisma, lots of personality, persuasion. They're outgoing. They're not afraid to talk to anybody. Um, they tend to rely on their innate ability to connect with people or to charm and persuade them. And it's hard typically to get them to use tools because they think they got it. They think, oh, yeah, no, I'm really good. I got this. I don't need tools. And um, But you know what? I'm going to tell you that an extrovert needs the tools just as much, if not more. And we'll go back to that. But... Um, that they do have skills and charm, and sometimes that works, but it's not duplicable or duplicatable. I, I, that word's used different ways, so but I guess they're both kind of good. But but um, if you're really extroverted and you're really outgoing and charming, it's going to be hard for you to work with your team who is not an extrovert. It, it's, they can't duplicate what you're doing. So that's one reason. And another reason why it's um, not a good idea to just not use the tools just because you have it all going on and you think you know it all, and you think you're outgoing and friendly, is because you're going to miss a lot of steps, and that's <clears> going to hurt your business too. So we'll come back to that. <clears throat> but introverts, they're, they're more likely to duplicate because they're willi willing to use the system and the tools. And so sometimes introverts will see people, on, you know, the leaders up on stage and all kinds of things are happening in their business, and the introvert starts thinking, I can't do all of that. I'm not that person. And that's the thing is they can. And the reason they can is because they're much more likely to follow the instructions, use the tools and follow the system. So Patricia says, I need all the tools I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a tools girl, Patricia. I love tools. So this is how we do it. Okay. And you can adapt this to you or you can, you can use them as is, or you can adapt this to you, whatever works for you. But I strongly suggest that you use a system in your business and we'll get into that in more detail. So, um, it's not all about personality and charisma. What makes you successful in this is to be able to do a small, a few small, simple steps and make it duplicatable so that your team, everybody on your team, can follow and do those same small, simple steps. That's what's going to create massive growth in your business. That's what's going to get you to where you want to go. So instead of trying to play the personality game, be a pointer. Point to tools. So, hey, would you like an Avon brochure? And when you do that, you hand them the brochure. I don't have one. <laughs> hand them the brochure as though they're going to take it, right? Just, hey, would you like an Avon brochure? I would. If I assume they're going to take it, they will. And then I um, use the forms. I use the follow-up forms that we talk about almost every week. You know, I mail my brochures. Would you like to get on my mailing list? And if they're interested in Avon, they will probably want to get on your mailing list. If they're not, then they'll say, no, thank you. And then, hey, it's not a problem. Go with the easy ones. So if they say, no, thank you, you just say, not a problem. My name and number's on the back of the book, right? <laughs> so um, you could say things like, ever thought of making extra money with Avon? Here's a flyer with more information. And if somebody asks you a question and you don't know, you can always say, I'm not sure about that. I do know, though, that it makes me feel good. It gives me energy, or it does this for me. It makes my skin feel amazing, and it's 100% guaranteed. So if it doesn't work for you, you can get your money back. You don't have to have all the answers. If you, if you really try to have all the answers, people aren't going to want to follow you because they'll think, I can never do that. 
So you don't need all the answers. So don't beat yourself up if you don't have them. Or if it's something you really need to provide an answer to, then just say, I don't know the answer to that, but let me find out and I'll get back to you. So, or you could say, if someone asks you, what's so great about selling Avon? How about you just tell your own story? Why did you start? What, what did Avon give you? And so it could be, for me, Avon provides me the opportunity to be home with my daughter. I love not having to leave her with the babysitter just so I can go out and make money. And so those are really, I mean, there's probably lots of things you can say, but those are probably the main things that you might want to have to say to somebody when you're talking to them. You don't have to be Mr. Bubbly or, or Miss Chatty Cathy or anything like that because Sometimes that actually turns people off. I mean, you know, it, could, it, could, it depends on who you're talking to. But um, so the cool thing about Avon is Avon has 26 brochures every year, meaning you have 26 events to work towards, right? You're always working towards the next event. And in this case, the next event would be the next brochure. That's how you work your business. Every new brochure is an opportunity to go back to that same customer and get another order or to get new customers and team members. <clears throat> you know, um, I know that Avon's looking at different ways to do things. I know they're looking at, um, when I was with Scott White in New York City, he was talking, now he didn't have any answers, they've not made any decisions, so please don't take anything I say and say that they said that, because they didn't. But Scott said he was looking at options. They're looking at maybe coming out with a smaller brochure or less often or more online, and they're just trying to figure out what works. And you know, I know in Canada, their brochures are good for three weeks. I really hope Avon doesn't do that. I really hope they don't because if you take your every two week long brochure and you change it into every three weeks, that's a third less opportunities you have to get new orders. That means you're gonna lose a third of your sales in my mind <clears throat> because every time you give a new brochure to a customer, that's an opportunity to get a new order, right? So I hope they don't do that. I, I If they wanna make the brochure smaller, that would be okay. I hope they continue the brochures. I think that's really important. But you know, they hadn't they haven't made any decisions at all. They're just wondering what's the best way to move forward. That's all. And um, I probably shouldn't even brought that up. But I just really think that 26 brochures that, um, every year is what's huge. That's what helps us to build our business. And so in our team, we teach how to automate things like follow up. And we teach how to use the Avon brochure to build your business. You can click on these links and you can um, read them yourself. But I'm going to go to the follow-up. Sherry likes them. She likes them the way they are. I agree, Sherry. I do too. So let's go to this one. We teach how to automate things like follow-up. Because this is the system that we use. This is what I use to grow my business. And trust me, when I was in California, <coughs> I had... I sold at president's council level. I was selling about 130,000 a year. And I did this by, by using this system and 100% by using the system. And it wasn't like it took me a lot of time. I didn't have a lot of time. Richard and I were both working 60, 70 hours a week. I was commuting an hour and a half each way. I lived in Ventura and I worked in Goleta, which is just north of Santa Barbara. It was about 40, 40 miles away, but it was an hour and a half in traffic. It was horrible. So. Um, we worked our business when we can make it work. And so we learned very quickly that if we wanted to grow, we needed to find systems because sometimes there's, you just couldn't do everything and still get it going, right? Still make it happen. So one of the things that we did back then in California was we did bulk mail. So we bought a mailing permit at the post office. You had to have, I think it was 200 pieces, maybe 150 pieces, something like that. You had to have, you know, X number of pieces in order to bulk mail. We had to get our labels ready. Our, our labels had to be exactly the way the post office wanted them. And then we got our brochures ready. And then Richard, we, we sorted them by zip code. And Richard took them to the post office. And that's how we got our brochures out to every one of our customers. So basically, I've been using bulk mail for almost 17 years, probably for about 15 years out of my Avon. I've been with Avon 17 years. And so now we moved to Salt Lake. We had to start over and I'm looking for new customers now because I'm building a whole new business. So now I use campaign mailer. So in, we still, we use campaign mailer to bulk mail brochures to every customer and campaign mailer. Um, let me click on this and go to that link. 
Uh, that's not going to take you there. Okay, so campaign mailer. Let me take you there. The price of the brochures depends on how many you mail. So if we look at the pricing, so if you're mailing one to nine brochures, it's $1.59 each. It actually went up by, yeah, by a dime, sales, right? but only yeah. on the smaller quantities. <clears throat> so if you are so if you only want to mail one brochure, you can mail one brochure. It's $1.59. If you're mailing um, 100 or even 200, it gets to be a lot cheaper. And so I'm up here in the 100 to 200 plus right now. I'm going to be pairing it back. Actually, probably in the 200 plus right now. But I'm going to be pairing it back because we can't, you know, customers have to place orders eventually. I give them about four months before I drop them off my, my mailing list. And if they don't place an order in four months, I'll drop them off. And then if they place another order, or even if they call me and say, hey, I'm not getting brochures, then I'll probably add them back on. But, you know, if you keep adding and keep adding and keep adding, you're just going to keep spending money. And you only want to be spending them with customers that are actually customers, right? So you just, this is the cost. I mean, that mm -hmm. includes the brochure. So you don't have to buy the brochure. So um, they, the campaign mailer buys them. And they're in Texas. And so you just upload. Yeah, Priscilla says, I love campaign mailer. So do I. So you put your um, contacts in there, and it's just saved in there. And then when you're ready to do your mailing, you just go in and you change the label because you want to change it according to the campaign you're on. You know, the orders go in by this date or whatever. And then you just click send and and, it, and they save your credit card. So you just literally can just click OK and, and it goes and it's charged to your credit card. So this is how I get brochures out to every single customer. So once I got that brochure out to every single customer, now I want to follow, automate my follow ups. Now, this is where it really comes in if you're an introvert or an extrovert or if you're shy. I mean, how many of you are like, I don't want to call my customers. I don't want to bother them, right? I've heard that so many times. And you are not bothering them. This is customer service. And they know you're the Avon rep, and they're happy to get that call from you. So please don't assume that you're bugging them. They wanted a brochure. If they wanted a brochure, then I assume that means they want to buy Avon. So by not calling them, you're taking that away from them, right? Because everybody, hi, Bonnie, good to see you. Everybody is busy these days. We are all busy. We all have kids. We have soccer. We have Little League. We have gymnastics. We have, gosh, I'm taking care of my mom. There's a lot of us my age who are dealing with elderly parents. We have all kinds of things going on in our lives. And a lot of us work. And we're just busy, you know, and the truth of the matter is, and I know this is going to sound gross, but the truth of the matter is they're probably looking at your brochure in the bathroom and they're turning the pages over or they're marking them somehow, or maybe they're sitting in bed before they go to sleep at night and they're looking at it and they can't call you then. And so they put it down and their intention is to call you and then they forget. And if you don't give them a reminder, eventually they're going to look at that brochure and they're not even going to remember and they're going to say, oh, that's expired and they're going to throw it away. But if you give them a quick reminder, you're going to get the calls. And so back in Salt Lake, back in Ventura, when I was in California, this was about six, seven years ago. We, um, eight years ago, something like that, we didn't, texting wasn't such a big thing then. So we used a service called um, Voice Shot, which we, I recorded a message. It was like a 30 second message. Hi, this is Lynn with Avon. Just a quick reminder my order's going in. If you need anything, please let me know by such and such a time. If you don't need anything, no problem. Just have a great weekend. <clears throat> and I would record that message, I would send it to my list. The service would dial those phone numbers. And when the, somebody answered the phone, it would play that recording, okay? And just like you get the recordings, you get telephone solicitors now. <clears throat> At the time, all the Avon reps on the bulletin boards, back then we didn't have Facebook, all the reps on the bulletin boards were saying, don't do that, don't do that. You're going to alienate your customers. They're not going to like it. And I didn't have a choice. I just knew that I was working so many hours and I was driving back and forth to work that if I didn't do something like this, my customers weren't going to get that reminder. And so I did it and I crossed my fingers and I was hoping I wouldn't make anybody mad. And, you know, my orders went in on Wednesday. I told my customers I needed to have their orders by Monday at the time. And um, originally we did our calls on Saturday and what we found out was 
that um, a lot of times, you know, they pick up the phone and they say hello and the recording starts right away. So if it's a kid or a husband, they're like, mom, by the time she gets to the phone, the recording's gone. So we figured out that if we did it on Friday instead of Saturday, there was more of likely chance that it would go on voicemail or that the mother might be home and might answer the phone rather than the kids because the kids and husbands are at school or at work or whatever. So that worked really good. And you know what? Back then, I might have between, I don't know, five and $600 on Friday morning. And when I sent that voice shot out, by Monday, I was over $1,500, sometimes $5,000 just from that voice shot. It was huge. Actually, it was like five to $6,000 by Monday. It was huge. Mm -hmm. It made all the difference in the world. So today, we don't use that, but I do use a company called Dial My Calls. And um, let me see if that will take me. So this is Dial My Calls. Whoops, what happened? Okay. And you can um, set up an account here. You can, they have a monthly fee that you, that gets you so many calls a month, but I actually put a pen to it and it was cheaper to just pay for the, like I pay for credits and then I use them up and when I run out, I buy more. It was cheaper that way to do it that way. They do text as well, but you have to have a monthly subscription if you want to get the return text if a customer responds to you. So I, I ultimately am not using them for text. I'm only using them for voice calls. So what I do is when I get my customer, I get a new person's name that I gave a brochure to. I first try to figure out if it's a cell phone or a um, home phone. If it's a landline, that those are the people I'm putting in dial my calls, if it's a landline. So I will add them to my address book and dial my calls. And then um, right now my order, my actual order had to go in this last Wednesday was when I placed it. So I told my customers I needed it by Tuesday. So on Monday, so like last Friday I scheduled it to go out Monday morning at 10 a.m. And there's about, there's not a lot. I only have maybe 18 people in this in this voice thing because most of them are, are cell phones. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So at 10 a.m., the message goes out to all of my customers. And I just schedule it every campaign. It's not automatic. So you do need to schedule it. But it's just a matter of go in, set it up, schedule the call, and boom, you're done. It's not a, should I call this person? They're going to be mad at me if I call them, right? It's just you're doing this this task. So then they get that recorded message. And if they want to order something, they can call you back or email you or text or whatever. And also, just, just so you understand, these only go out to people that have a landline. She she just said a couple of things there. But just so you understand, only those that have a landline get a voice voice message like this. Yeah. If the, they all have, the others, the, the cell phones get texts. If they have a cell phone, we text them. Yeah. So this is, like I said, only about 18 people out of my whole list mm -hmm. right now are getting these broadcasts. Mm -hmm. So seriously, um, let me see if I can log into this really quick. So seriously, this is how easy it is. So um, I just click here, new broadcast. Actually, it looks like 29. Sorry about that. Use the call broadcast service. I just leave all those blank. I click next. I want a traditional recording. That just means they're going to um, pick up the phone. They're going to get my recording. I've already recorded my message. So I just click that and next. And I just send it to my group. I have a group called Landlines. It has 29 people in it. Next. And then I schedule my broadcast to be sent later, and I schedule it. And it's that simple. Then next and done. That's how simple that is. And then, so that's my voice. So when, um, if I have a cell phone, I use this program called Text Magic. So let me get to that one just so you can see. We got all these windows open. So Text Magic is an online, it's all in one bulk SMS service. So that's text service, right? So with Text Magic, I just sent a, a really quick message that says, This is Lynn with Avon because I want to keep this short. Quick reminder my campaign 26 order goes in on Wednesday. If I can order anything for you, please let me know by tomorrow. Have a great day. And Text Magic has an app that you can put on your phone. Also, you can go to their website and you can view it, but it's like, um, it's actually exactly like um, texting on your phone. So if somebody responds, and they do, a lot of them do respond, and that's why, that's why I didn't wanna do the other 
the dial my calls because I don't get the responses. So text magic is just like, well, actually, I can probably, probably show it there. Log in. Um, I have, my customers are in here, so I have to be careful. But see, I have my chats here, literally. And I'm not going to spend all See, this is the chat. So somebody, look at this lady right here. So I've been sending her these every campaign. Hey, quick reminder. My order goes in. Hey, quick reminder. And then this time, all of a sudden, please order me three glimmer sticks in sugar brown. Thank you. So see, so literally I have, and so this is just like texting on your phone. It is, and it comes up. If you have the app on your phone, it literally comes up just like a text. They respond to you a lot of times with an order. So, um, and you get an immediate response. That's people, that's why we love text. People love text, they don't like to be bothered, but they'll answer you within five seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, people don't like to use phones anymore. Yeah. So, so, um, this is all in here how to automate follow up. So, okay, so I sent a brochure by mail every campaign, then right a couple of days before my order goes in. I send a text and I send a voice chat call, a, a um, dial my calls call. I schedule those throughout Monday morning because I'm placing my order on Wednesday. You can do this whatever you do. So it's about two to three days before your order's due. And you don't ever want to tell somebody to get back to you by the day you're placing your order. Give yourself a day. So get, tell you the them to get day. back to you the <laughs> night before, right? Yeah, they'll call you the next day. Yeah, because they always do. They always push it. So, so you're going to mail a brochure, you're going to do a follow-up, you're going to do a text reminder or a voice shot. And then also I have an email list and I send an email saying, hey, my orders are going in. I also send an email saying the website is changing over to this campaign. If you want to order something from this campaign, you might want to do it before this date. So that email is up to you. I believe you can send an email in your um, back office from Avon. You can send an email to all your customers. But this is critical. These follow-ups, these dial my calls and text magic. Like I said, you don't have to use those services. Text magic also has a monthly fee, but they also have a deal where you can buy credits. And the credits cost me like four cents. So I will buy $25 worth. And I mean, seriously, if you're texting a hundred people, that's only $4, right? Four cents a text. If it's a longer text, they charge you two credits. Um, so, it just I keep it short. I keep it in that one one um, amount. The, so. the, the, the beauty of, of either texting or or sending a voice message to your customers is even if you have twenty of them, I, I bet you we could ask every single one of you to sit down and call twenty people to remind them of their order, and you probably wouldn't get through more than ten of them. Um, and the the thing is, we are, we're all busy and we all can get interrupted. But if you do this, you set up the text or you set up the voice calls then boom, it's done within a matter of, of less than a minute. You have all the calls out to all your customers to remind them. And then if you get an emergency call like we do, we have, we have to run her mom to the doctor or if your kid gets hurt at school or whatever it is, boom, you're ready to, you, you can rock and roll. You're ready to go. Yeah, I was just going to say that. So, yeah. so um, yeah, I mean, and here's the deal. If you're shy, if you don't want to make those calls, this <laughs> saves you that, right? Because it's literally just going on the computer or on your phone and scheduling them. You don't have to worry about if, if they're going to think that I'm being pushy, um, anything like that. You just go on and you schedule it. You schedule the follow-ups and boom, they're done. So you don't have to be mistalkative. You don't have to call. And Richard's absolutely right. If you gave out 100 brochures, I hope you're giving out at least 100. I hope you're giving out a lot more than that. But how many of you are really doing follow-ups with 100 people? If you gave out 100 brochures, you should be doing follow-ups with 100 people. And I can bet, I can almost guarantee that you're not. I can almost guarantee it because we're all busy. Just like Richard said, we're all busy. And you might have the best intentions and you might sit down and start to text people and then you get to 10 and then you get called away or whatever. And, and this is not a group text. This is really important. Don't get on your phone and send a group text to all your customers because no. that's the quickest way to lose your customers. Mm -hmm. You're going to make them mad. This when, when you use a service like this, the reason why you're paying for it is you send one text, it goes out to your 200 customers, but they each get a text on their own. And when they respond, it comes to you. There's not 50 other people in there going, why am I copied on all these messages? Mm -hmm. So yeah. don't ever do this from yourself. 
And you don't have to use these tools. It's your business. You can work it the way you want. But I just, I can almost guarantee you that you're not doing the follow-ups that you should be doing with every single brochure you give out. I almost can guarantee it because it takes a lot of time and effort. And if you are, hey, kudos to you, right? If you are doing it, then great. But how about if you freed up your time and you use that time to go out and grow your business? Maybe get more customers. Maybe get more recruits. It's just huge. It's just huge. The follow-up is huge. So, um... It's, it's all about, then there's this other one here, use your Avon brochure to help build the business. That article goes into more details about how the more brochures you give out and the more people that you give books to and the more you follow up with them, the more money you will make. So if you want to make a lot of money, I strongly suggest you go and read that article too. But um, it's it's really simple. We want to we wanna do a few simple steps repeatedly, and that's going to grow our business. And if they're simple, and if it's just a few, our team is going to do the same thing. They're going to follow it, right? And if we can teach our team to do a few simple steps, and how hard is that? Get a brochure to everybody, do a follow-up every single time. That's it. That's what we do. Get a brochure and do a follow-up. And then take their order, place the order, deliver it, right? And then you get a brochure out to them and follow it. So Patricia says, I call everyone after work. <clears throat> Patricia, do you have 200 customers yet? You're brand new, so mm -hmm. you probably don't. But at some point, you're going to have 200 customers or 300 or 400. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really want to grow your business, you might be giving out 500 books, and I can almost guarantee you you're not going to have time to make all those calls. Yeah, it works It works in the beginning. If you're, you're having to pinch pennies and you're trying to stay on a budget, that's cool. But you know, eventually, you're going to have to try to go to a bigger business. But the coolest thing about automating it is that whether you're too shy to talk to people or if you're like me, I'm Mr. Bubbly, and I get off topic real quick. This helps you keep focused. And, and boom, all you're trying to do is, is mention Avon to them, get them a brochure, and get their information. And to me, it helps me stay on target. So. You know, that's a good point, actually. I know Richard very well, and he is Mr. <laughs> Bubbly. <laughs> and he he will do a great job of getting those brochures out to everybody. I can give him those 300 brochures and say, get these delivered to all these people. And that, in fact, he used to do that um, back before we started the bulk mail. He used to do that. And um, it would take his whole day off to, to deliver brochures. And so that kind of, that you know, we our days off were so few and far between now. We didn't want to waste our whole day doing that. Yeah, you couldn't grow our business. So, we, we could only do so many brochures and yeah. that was it. So yeah. you know, he was great at that. He can yeah. drive around to each person's house and talk their head off and give them a brochure and make sure they get one. He is wonderful with that. But if I give him a list of people saying, you need to call all these people to follow up, I guarantee you he's not going to get through three. Is that many? Because <laughs> Richard is a tigger, and it won't take him more than two minutes to get really bored with that, and he'll be <laughs> off and on to something else and they won't get followed up. So an extrovert, just because you're outgoing and friendly doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good at business because in our business, it's all about the follow-up. It really is. So um, that's all I really have. That's just we're only in a half hour. That's good. We don't, we don't really want these calls to be that long. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Let me see. What do see I got here? Comments you got there. So Patricia says that's true. I'm, I assume you're talking about that you don't yeah. have a lot of customers yet. Mm -hmm. Looks like, um, yeah, yeah, most people are like, um, we've already said that. Some had to leave and they're watching the replay. But, um, okay, I don't really see any comments there. Let me go back to us. So, thank you guys for being here. We really appreciate you. Our next call, or our next Facebook Live, will be next Sunday, December 9th. Same time, same place. I haven't figured out yet what I'm going to talk about, but I will. And I will get this posted, and I need to talk to you after the meeting. Okay, Patricia. Mm -hmm. I, If you want, I'll give you a call as soon as we get off the meeting. Okay, okay so um, anyway, thank you guys for being here, and have a great rest of your Sunday, and have an amazing week. Good night, everyone. Bye. Have a great week.